Disguised as curvy human bombshells, the alien femme fatales stalked Earth's hottest nightclubs, hunting for muscular young men to seduce and harvest genetic material from, knowing humanity's very future hinged on their mission's clandestine success. Our birth rates have plummeted. Our genetic diversity is critically low. The Iridian race will go extinct within a generation if we don't find a solution, Sagan said. The tall, iridescent-scaled alien paced anxiously in the dimly lit laboratory full of advanced technology. Tycho, an aged Iridian in flowing robes, gripped his staff and nodded. We've exhausted all options on Iridia. The humans of Earth are our only hope. Their genetic makeup is remarkably similar to ours, and they possess adaptability, a trait we lack. Sagan stopped pacing. A glimmer of hope shone in his violet eyes. You're suggesting we use human DNA to revitalize our gene pool? But how? The humans are primitive xenophobes. They'll never agree to help us willingly. Ah, but that's where our shape-shifting abilities come in, Tycho said with a knowing smile. We'll send a team of our most attractive females to Earth, disguised as human women. They'll seduce the human males, collect their genetic material, and return to Iridia. The humans will be none the wiser. The... Sagan frowned. It seems risky. What if the humans discover our true nature? Can we trust our agents not to form attachments to their targets? Tycho waved a dismissive hand. Nonsense. Our agents are professionals, experts in seduction and deception, and the primitive humans pose no real threat. This plan is foolproof. Very well, Sagan sighed, still uncertain. I'll assemble the team and brief them. The fate of our species rests on their success. The two Iridians exited the lab, ready to put their audacious plan into action, unaware of the unforeseen complications that awaited them on Earth, complications that could unravel everything and seal the extinction of the Iridian race once and for all. The bright California sun glinted off the trendy storefronts lining the crowded Los Angeles street. At a bustling outdoor cafe, Two stunning women sat across from each other, sipping lattes and scanning the passers-by. To the casual observer, they appeared to be just another pair of beautiful friends enjoying a day out, but Astra and Lyra were far more than met the eye. Astra leaned forward, her blonde hair catching the light. She spoke in a low voice. I've found our first target, Eric Adams. He's a software engineer at Omnitech, single, in great shape. High IQ. He's perfect for what we need. Good work, Lyra said with a sly smile. The redhead's full lips curled mischievously. I'll access his data, create a profile to match his interests. We'll accidentally run into him at Cosmic Coffee tomorrow morning. His usual haunt. Astra's brow furrowed slightly, a flicker of worry in her eyes. Lyra, remember our training. No emotions, no attachments. This is a harvesting mission, pure and simple. We can't afford any slip-ups, no matter how charming these human males might be. Rolling her eyes, Lyra waved a dismissive hand. Please, Astra, give me some credit. I'm not some rookie. Emotions are for lesser species, not elite agents like us. Humans are so primitive anyway, it's not like they could ever truly connect with superior beings like ourselves. Nodding, Astra seemed reassured. The two Iridians finished their drinks and rose from the table, their holographic disguises shimmering subtly in the bright sunlight. As they strode confidently down the street, a group of human men openly gawked at the head-turning beauties. Astra and Lyra exchanged a knowing glance. Their seductive trap was already being set. But little did the alien agents realize as they vanished into the crowded urban jungle to begin their manipulations that Eric Adams was not just some simple human rube. The brilliant but unassuming software engineer had secrets of his own, secrets that could throw the Iridian's plans into total chaos. Astra and Lyra's mission was about to take a turn into the unknown. On board the cloaked Iridian mothership silently orbiting Earth, Sagan and Tycho intently watched the holographic display of their agent's progress. In the high-tech surveillance room, the two aliens observed Astra and Lyra's interactions with the human target, Eric Adams, at his regular coffee shop haunt. Sagan scrutinized Eric's body language and facial expressions, 
as the human conversed animatedly with the disguised Iridian operatives. Impressive. The human seems quite taken with our agents. He's already agreeing to a dinner date with Astra tonight. As expected, Tycho replied, a satisfied grin spreading across his features. Our agents are irresistible to human males. It won't be long before they have him eating out of their hands, among other things. Sagan's brow furrowed as a potential complication occurred to him. But what about the human's work? If he's as intelligent as his profile suggests, won't his co-workers notice if he starts spending all his time with our agents? Tycho let out a soft chuckle, waving off his colleagues' concerns. Ah, oh, that's where our advanced hacking comes in. We've already infiltrated the human's workplace, altering his schedule and workload to give him more free time. As far as his co-workers are concerned, he's just taking some well-deserved vacation days. On the holographic screen, Astra and Eric exited the coffee shop side by side, engaged in flirtatious banter as they strolled down the bustling city street. Lyra tailed them at a discreet distance, eavesdropping on their conversation through a concealed earpiece. Sagan settled back in his chair, a hint of begrudging respect coloring his tone. You know, for a primitive species, the humans are surprisingly resourceful. They've accomplished so much with such limited technology. Imagine what they could achieve with access to our knowledge and resources. Indeed, Tycho mused, stroking his chin thoughtfully. Perhaps once we've secured our own species' future, we could consider forming an alliance with the humans. They could be valuable allies in the galactic community. As the scene faded, Sagan and Tycho remained fixated on monitoring their operative's progress, blissfully unaware of the deepening bond developing between Astra and Eric, an unforeseen variable that could have far-reaching ramifications for both the Iridian mission and the intertwined destinies of their respective civilizations. The soft glow of candlelight flickered across Astra's flawless human features as she gazed into Eric's eyes, her heart racing with a confusing mix of genuine emotion and the cold reality of her mission. Lyra, disguised as a waitress, silently moved about the apartment, gathering DNA samples from Eric's wine glass and utensils with practiced efficiency. As the evening wore on, the conversation between Astra and Eric deepened, moving from casual flirtation to a profound connection neither had anticipated. Eric leaned in close, his words slightly slurred from the wine. There's something about you, Astra. I feel like you understand me in a way no one else ever has. It's like you're not even from this world. Astra's breath caught in her throat, a sudden surge of guilt and longing threatening to overwhelm her carefully constructed facade. Eric, I... I feel the same way. But there's something I need to tell you. Something important. Just as the words began to form on her lips, Lyra's earpiece crackled to life, Sagan's urgent voice filling her ear. Lyra, we have a situation. Human scientists have detected our mothership. They're trying to make contact. You and Astra need to return immediately. Lyra sprang into action, staging a fake emergency phone call. She rushed into the dining room, her face a mask of concern. Astra, we need to go. It's Mom. She's in the hospital. Torn between her mission and her growing feelings for Eric, Astra hesitated for a brief moment before nodding. She turned to Eric, her eyes filled with regret. I'm so sorry, Eric. I have to go. I promise I'll explain everything later. As the two Iridian agents hurried out of the apartment, Eric sat alone at the table. Confusion and heartache etched across his face, blissfully unaware of the interstellar drama unfolding around him. On the mothership's bridge, Sagan and Tycho faced a tense standoff with the human scientists, their secret mission suddenly on the brink of exposure. The lead scientist, a middle-aged man with graying hair and a look of wonder in his eyes, spoke first. Greetings, visitors from the stars. We come in peace seeking to learn from your advanced civilization. Sagan and Tycho exchanged a worried glance, the weight of their decision heavy upon them. They could retreat and abandon their plan, leaving their species to face extinction, or they could take a chance and engage with the humans directly, potentially gaining powerful allies in their desperate quest for survival, but risking everything in the process. Sagan and Tycho sat in the dimly lit conference room, 
the weight of their species' fate bearing down on them. The door slid open with a soft hiss, revealing Astra and Lyra, their human disguises now shed. Astra stepped forward, her violet eyes shimmering with emotion. Sagan, Tycho, I, I couldn't go through with it. Eric and I, we connected on a level I never thought possible with a human. He deserves to know the truth about who I am and why I'm here. Sagan sighed deeply, his scaled brow furrowing. Astra, you know as well as I do that the truth is a luxury we cannot afford. The humans have discovered our presence, and we must act swiftly to ensure our survival. Lyra, her expression stoic, interjected. The mission was a success. We've obtained the genetic material needed to begin the revitalization process. We should return to Iridia before the situation with the humans escalates further. Tycho shook his head, his eyes narrowing. Abandoning the mission now would be a mistake. The humans have proven themselves to be far more capable than we initially believed. They could be invaluable allies, but if we leave them feeling betrayed, they could also become formidable adversaries. Sagan leaned back in his chair, his mind racing as he weighed their options. After a long moment, he spoke. We will proceed with the genetic integration as planned. However, we will also initiate a limited exchange of information with the human scientists. We'll share enough of our technology and knowledge to foster trust and cooperation, but not so much as to compromise our own security. Astra, torn between her duty and her growing love for Eric, spoke up once more. Please let me talk to Eric. Let me explain everything to him. I know he'll understand. Sagan's expression softened as he nodded. Very well, Astra. You may speak with the human, but remember, the survival of our species must be our top priority. If he proves uncooperative, we will have no choice but to take more drastic measures. As the scene faded, Astra prepared to return to Earth, the fate of two civilizations resting on her shoulders. The Iridians had secured the key to their genetic future, but at what cost to Astra's budding relationship with Eric? The humans, on the brink of gaining access to advanced alien technology, now faced the sobering realization that they were not alone in the universe, and that their new allies' motives may not be entirely altruistic. The stage was set for an uncertain future, one in which the delicate balance between cooperation and conflict could tip at any moment. The Iridians' desperate gamble had paid off, but the true price of their survival remained to be seen. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.